I am David, your developer on Duty, and in this video we will have a look at async local storage. Let's start with a simple use case for async local storage. Let's say you have an Express application and inside your Express application, you typically have a handler for some requests, in this case, a GET request on the root path. Inside this handler, you await some asynchronous functions, for example, in this case, perform some work. And inside that function, you call another function, perform even more work. And now your task is it to create log statements inside your called functions and identify the incoming request. To identify the incoming request, we can, for example, construct a counter, let rec id equals to zero. And now inside that handler, we increase the count of our request number. So we just say rec id plus plus. And now we have uh, an identifier for the request. The problem is that you need access to this request ID wherever you want to perform your log statement. One naive approach to solve this problem is to pass it to the function as a function parameter. But as you can see, this can become quite tedious because every function needs this argument. And now we can do this log statement console.log performing work for request ID. So this approach will obviously work, but let's just try it out. Node server.js. I perform some HTTP request and you can see I get performing work for one. If I fire another HTTP request, you can see I get performing work for two. So it works, but all your function arguments are polluted with this additional parameter. So let's try to find a different way Let's get rid of that. And here we still need access. So how do we do that? You might be tempted to just use a global object, for example, global rec ID equals to rec ID, and then you have access to this global object inside your function. But this is really, really bad because when you have several requests coming in at the same time, then you share this global object across different requests, and then you might lock wrong information and you have race conditions. So let's not do that. So what we would need instead is kind of a global variable, which is local to the current asynchronous context. Luckily, such a construct is available in the async hooks package, which you have by default. So we can just say require async hooks. And inside this package, you have access to this async local storage class. Now, first, let's create an instance of it. Now, this instance of async local storage can be, for example, stored in a global variable, but let's just leave it as a context in this case. Now, the first thing we want to do is to fill this storage in this asynchronous context with a request ID. So we can just write async local storage dot run. Now as a first parameter, we provide the store itself, which in our case is just the request ID. And the second parameter is the callback function, which will have access to this local storage in this context. So we can just write async and then we perform our function calls. And you can see that we have access to this variable when we write async local storage dot get store. Now let's see if this works. I just start the server, trigger some HTTP requests, performing work for one, performing work for two, and there will be no race conditions. Compared to passing this information as function parameters, Async local storage comes with a slight performance penalty, so use it with care and only if it's really necessary. But in your everyday web app, this shouldn't matter too much. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned.